Okay, folks, we are on page 314 of the Pathophysiology and Pharmacology book. Let's begin with this pretest as a prelude to this segment. A 77 year old woman is presented with syncope during her routine daily exercise. Her history is significant for several other episodes of syncope within the past six months. She has a systolic murmur that is best heard at the upper right sternal border. There is radiation of the murmur into the neck. Which of the following options is the most probable diagnosis? Mitral stenosis, mitral regarge, tricuspid regarge, aortic stenosis, or aortic insufficiency? Let me give you the correct answer at this point, and we're going to discuss the relevant issues hereafter. The correct answer is aortic stenosis. What is the second most common and second most commonly tested valvular defect? Aortic stenosis again. So this brings us to pressure volume loop pathophysiology of aortic stenosis. This diagram shows a normal pressure volume loop for the left ventricle, the A, and the classic pressure volume loop in a patient with aortic stenosis, pressure volume loop B. Aortic stenosis impairs ventricular emptying due to presence of high outflow resistance. A large pressure gradient across the valve is required to push the blood through the valve. This raises the peak or the end systolic pressure or the afterload. So as you see, the pressure increases at the end of the systole to a very high level, like 200 millimeter of the mercury. And as you see in here, the normal heart, the pressure in systole is practically similar to the pressure of the aorta. 120 here, 120 there. So across the aortic valve, the differential of the pressure is similar in normal heart. Compare this to aortic stenosis. You have a very high pressure within the left ventricle. Compare it with the low systolic pressure of 90 within the aorta. So in order to pass blood through that stenotic valve, we need to generate a very high pressure gradient in aortic stenosis. The shaded PV loop represents mild aortic stenosis in this diagram. Compared to normal heart, which is this curve, the ventricular pressure rises sharply in systole. Meanwhile, less volume is ejected into the aorta. What happens to stroke volume in aortic stenosis and what portion of the shaded diagram represents it? If you recall, stroke volume is the difference between end-diastolic volume and end-systolic volume. In a normal heart, it is, in this diagram, 130 minus 50, about 80. But the width of the loop is decreased in aortic stenosis. Therefore, the stroke volume decreases in aortic stenosis. What will happen to end systolic ventricular volume in aortic stenosis? End systolic ventricular volume increases. At the end of the systole in normal heart, you have about 50 ml remaining in the heart. At the end of the systole in aortic stenosis, that number increases to maybe about 70. So more blood stays in the heart in aortic stenosis. Do you expect the velocity of fiber shortening increase or decrease in aortic stenosis or any condition that increases the afterload? Increased afterload slows the velocity of myocytic shortening. Because the period of time available for ejection 
is relatively fixed at about 200 milliseconds, a decrease in fiber shortening velocity drops the ejection volume and as a result more blood remains in the ventricle after systole. So you expect the end diastolic volume to increase. What is the expected end diastolic volume in AS and how does this affect the force of contraction? As a result of increase in end systolic volume, the excess residual blood is added to the incoming venous blood and raises end diastolic volume. This raises the preload and as a result via stalling law the force of contraction. So you expect the end diastolic volume, as you can see in this diagram, to increase. So over time you expect the pressure volume loop to tend to go to the right side. But there is an opposing force that will not allow overexpansion of that end diastolic volume. And that one would be the left-sided hypertrophy of the ventricle, and that one will limit the overexpansion of the end diastolic volume, but at the same time will raise the end diastolic pressure. So another thing that you expect over time is to see that base of the PV loop for aortic stenosis tilt also upward because the end diastolic pressure increases as a result of hypertrophy. What is the key adaptive the structural cardiac remodeling change? in response to aortic stenosis. Concentric ventricular hypertrophy. What type of dysfunction would you primarily see in concentric ventricular hypertrophy? Stolic or diastolic? The answer is diastolic dysfunction. Impaired filling due to reduced compliance as a result of concentric hypertrophy. What is the expected systemic blood pressure in aortic stenosis? As a result of fall in stroke volume, the arterial pressure drops substantially in aortic stenosis. What is an important clinical finding in aortic stenosis as a result of what we just discussed? syncope and faintness. Above diagram shows the characteristic auscultation findings of the heart of a patient diagnosed with AS. What is this finding? You see the first sound component, S1. You see the second sound that has two subcomponents, P and A. P for the closure of the pulmonary valve and A for the aortic. And you're going to see here your split. And a split is during expiration. Therefore, the answer is paradoxical split of the second heart sound. What are the top two unique auscultation findings in paradoxical split? Closure of the pulmonic valve before the aortic valve, and the fact that the split is pronounced in expiration and diminishes or vanishes with inspiration. A mnemonic to remember this fact, just to know the letter A is always before letter P, in the same way that it always comes in the English alphabet. With the exception of the paradoxical situation that the aortic valve closes after the pulmonary, in the same way that you write the letters of the paradox. What are the top three causes of paradoxical split? Aortic stenosis, left bundle branch block, systemic hypertension. In which of the above conditions the afterload decreases? In aortic stenosis and systemic hypertension. I see that most of you are puzzled by this answer. The good news is that you're all correct. I just wanted to get your attention.
actually in aortic stenosis and hypertension both after load increases. The condition that may potentially be associated with lower after load is the left bundle branch block. List the common cause of AS from the most common to the least common. Age-related calcification of the valve, congenital bicuspid aortic valve, and acute rheumatic fever. Note that acute rheumatic fever used to be the number one cause before we invented the antibiotics. Bicuspid valves calcify at an earlier age compared to trileaflet valves. Age of onset of symptoms in calcified valves is about 45 years for the bicuspid valves and 75 for trileaflet or normal valves. So in the patients with aortic stenosis as a result of calcification of the valves if they have a congenital bicuspid valve, the symptoms show up at an earlier age. But the classic patient is a patient who has 75 or more years of age. What is the best way to evaluate the function of the stenotic valve? Echocardiogram. What aortic valve size area is considered as severe aortic stenosis. When the area is less than one square centimeter. Normally aortic and pulmonic valves have three leaflets or cusps. Why do they call them semilunars? Because the cross section of the leaflets have a semilunar appearance as you see in here. Do you expect patients with aortic stenosis to have a wide or narrow pulse pressure? What is the pulse pressure? Is the difference between systolic and diastolic pressures. AS patients have a very narrow pulse pressures. Let's list the must-know clinical findings and keywords related to aortic stenosis. Paradoxical split, stolic crescendo decrescendo murmur, narrow pulse pressure, dyspnea upon exertion, and syncope. Well, this was self-explanatory. Faintness goes with AS. AS goes with astronaut. Astronaut reminds you of the rocket. and That rocket reminds you of the shape of the pressure volume loop.